This AFC North win totals and preview edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. Sports are back, and MyBookie is now offering a 100% deposit bonus when you use the promo code SGP. That's MyBookie.ag promo code SGP to play, win, and get paid. We're also brought to you by the leaders in daily fantasy, DraftKings. Download the DraftKings app now and use the promo code SGP to get a free shot. At one million dollars in total prizes for this weekend's UFC 252 contest. That's promo code SGP to get a free shot at one million dollars with your first deposit only at DraftKings. We're also brought to you by BetQL. Want to get an advantage over the sportsbook with NBA, NHL, and MLB back in action? You need to download BetQL, the only app you'll need to make smart bets this season. Head to betql.co and enter code SGP20. For twenty percent off your first subscription, that's betql.co promo code SGP twenty. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay per head providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sportsbook. Plus, Ace is offering up six weeks free over to aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. I got paper all around me. Yes, can only mean one thing. What's that? We're talking football. We're talking football. We're not speculating about football like some jabronis. We're not speculating, of course. Uh, what's going on? Well, we just dropped about that action. New show mm. on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Make some sure you check out Whippersnappers. Yeah, shout out to Kyle and uh, his and partner Mark. there, Mark. Lo- uh, Real fun episode. Make sure you check that out. Talking to UFC 252. Dude's a real enigma, Mark. Mark very, Glass. very elusive character. Make sure you check that out. I wonder if he fun. knows Dick Olson. Feels like they're on the same. <laughs> Feels like Mark and Dick might know each other. <laughs> they probably have hung out at some point. Make sure you check that out. And of course, the NBA gambling podcast feed is launched. Mm. It's in Spotify, in iTunes, soccer gambling podcast. Again, in iTunes. Apple, Spotify, the whole, yeah. the whole nine they there. Got a, they got a makeover over the weekend. Billy. Sharp. Yes. Got some new logos going. Billy uh, heating up. He's on fire. And as you're listening to this, there, there is a fresh champions league picks episode on the feed right now. So I, you know, if you're into, if you're into winning money on soccer, I know you're not always into winning money on soccer. No, I am into winning money <laughs> and I'll, I'll occasionally turn a blind eye to the fact that it's soccer, but why would I need to with the NBA? Uh, I'm going to get some <laughs> NHL action to go. I mean, of course, still flush from cash with my Colin Mora Kawa 35 to one. You're welcome. America. Uh, we've had a good week. We have had a good week. Kramer, of course, hit Jason day first round winner, but we also have uh we we've been plugging away here. This is our what third Division preview podcast, AFC is, West yeah. division preview podcast is up for grabs. Download that NFC West division preview podcast up for grabs as well. But today it's all about the AFC North. Oh, my favorite! It is well. That's because of course you're Ben Roethlisberger, mm. and uh, we have a fitting photo of Ben Roethlisberger <laughs> up in studio, and I, I can see Dad? the resemblance. <laughs> Although you don't let the beard get quite that long. And uh, I'm looking forward. That's, I'm impressed. I mean, as someone who does essentially, the beard comes off when it gets too much to deal with. When you going that far, like you've you've essentially said, uh, like fuck it to life for a little while. Well, and because who knows what's going on underneath there? Not to be Big Ben does not seem like the kind of guy that's putting product into his beard and making sure his <laughs> his chin sa- staying There's probably moisturized. Some stuff growing in there. Not to be a mask baby either, but. There's no way you're putting a mask over that gigantic beard. Uh, I I don't know. James Harden figured it out, but I, I just can't imagine Big Ben being able to actually put a mask over that. Mm. It, it it looks like a squirrel's nest that he's just got glued to his face. It's not a good look. I mean, it, it, impressive he got that far. I'll give him that. I don't know if if it's a great look, but you know, for a football player, I'm mad. I, I remember uh, Brett Kiesel? His his beard used to like just pour out of like the the chin guard would be like the skinniest punter one and just the hair pouring out of the. It sides. is kind of a cool look. Of course, he's clean shaven, clean cut. Kind he's, of a pussy move. Now that we're analyzing it, he's I'm got his eye. He's got his eye on the prize. Change what, what prize does he have his eye on? Well, I, I guess uh, hitting the hitting the over in the we, win total. That's what we care about. We're gonna get to that in just a second. 
That sound means it's time for football. It's almost here. We're only less than 30 days out. As you're listening to this podcast, we're going to be hitting you with all those divisional previews. Go back and check out. We did a bunch of top 10 fantasy football podcasts, player props podcast, bunch of fun bets. Of course, if you're going to be betting and of course you're going to be betting, that's why you're listening to the sports gambling podcast. You got to do it over at mybookie.ag. Right now, mybookie.ag is a promo code SGP, a 100% deposit bonus. This is my favorite time of year, Kramer, the 100% deposit bonus time of year where you can take $200. You're juiced up, I can tell. Turn it into $400 oh. that you could bet on. Oh, no. So you can take each one of our bets here in the AFC North, put 100 bucks on each. It's just that symbol. Or maybe you could have put. Four hundred dollars on Colin Morikawa. Yeah, I, I can't even do that math. That is what fourteen thousand dollars. Are you kidding me? All you got to do is go to mybookie.ag where you play. Unlike the Big Twelve and the Pac Twelve, oh. over at my bookie they play, they win, and then you get paid. The Big Ten, Sean. The Big Ten. Joining us on the line, Browns super fan Dave McAllister, also host of the Big Play Reflog. Show Dave, appreciate you calling in, man. What's going on, Sean and Ryan? How are you, man? Uh, doing great. Football. Good to hear from you. Yeah, I mean, well, before we fired this up, you just said you're watching your Indians get killed with no fans, and uh, it's certainly a weird experience um, watching. Yeah, I mean, any sort of blowouts where you don't even like, would the fans be leaving? What would be happening? Uh, how, how's your quarantine been treating you so far? Hey man, better than the cardboard cutouts. I'm uh, <laughs> sitting at home having a beer, watching sports. It could be worse. Yeah, exactly. And and thank <laughs> God for the NFL. They're they're all all you know looking like everything's just gonna plow ahead. Knock I'm just on wood. Knock on the wood. Don't want to jinx it, but uh, certainly getting jacked up for that. And uh, yeah, man. So we're here. We're well, doing- and Sean, I, earlier today I sent you a message, and I, I was it was like, hey man, t- check out the top cities. So far for August for us in Cleveland, number two. Wow. So we're speaking to our people right now, Sean. <laughs> we're speaking to our people. Yes. Dude, you you guys will find that, you know, Cleveland sports, when you look at like TV ratings or stuff like that, usually in the top five. And we are not a huge city, so I, I mean, your podcast is very similar. I'll be honest. I, I, you know, the believe land uh, 30 for 30 doc. I, I definitely enjoy that. It's that it, it's a fun story. It's easy to want to root for Cleveland. I mean, it, the Browns make it hard to want to root for a team <laughs> from Cleveland, but in general, it's, it's feels easy to want to pull for the, the, the ultimate underdog, right? Well, you know, and, and, as, and ownership sucks as, as a guy from Pennsylvania, I feel like Oh, Ohio is almost a kindred oh. spirit. Similar sort of yeah. weather. It's your younger similar brother. Just, Put him in a nuggie. S- similar, just like, hey, we all we care about is sports. The weather <laughs> sucks. This is what we're here for. And uh, I, that's what I love about Cleveland. Just hardcore, dedicated. And say what you will about the Brads as an organization. The fans have not wavered at all. Like the fans have been diehard the entire time. Through the ups, through the downs, unfortunately, kind of been yeah, lost a lot the of team downs. a little bit. <laughs> they lost the team, but they embraced it when it came no. back. So no knock on the Browns fans at all. Super diehards. And uh we, we so got we, we we drink a lot. We drink a <laughs> yeah, lot. Yeah, exactly. It's I, I feel like kindred <laughs> spirits with Cleveland, Buffalo, similar type of no. thing of just Sean, hey, you're a blue collar guy. That. That's what you're trying well, to say. Right I mean, now. I love I love drinking, I love gambling, <laughs> and I feel like the uh, you know, the city of Cleveland embraces that lifestyle. Some true hashtag DGENs only. All right, let's get to it. The the Browns coming off a season uh, somewhat disappointing, <laughs> to say the least. Six and Tell ten. <laughs> Six and ten. Their win total was set at nine and a half. Kramer and I no. were were staunchly opposed to the Browns hype train last year. Famously, was, was willing to take anyone's bet on <laughs> on uh, on the win total. Thought it was what nine and nine and a half, Sean. Yeah, Jesus. it was nine and a half. Came uh, came Biggest well win under. total in the division last year. Crazy and uh, R.I.P. Freddie Kitchens. They seem to get oh, rid of oh, him. Oh, he's been revived. He's <laughs> now my quarterback coach in New York. He, yeah, over in uh, greener pastures. What was your What was your big takeaway good, from good the? Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my my spin him, on this. Him uh, and Jason Garrett. That is just the dream team. I, I have a well <laughs> ironed out spin on this, and that's basically he just elevated too far to the head coach position. He's back to where he should be, quarterbacks coach. 
Well, do you, and now where do you stand on, uh, on where they're at the Browns as a whole with Baker? Do you think year two was just, are we throwing Freddie kitchens under the bus? Is he the only guy to blame? Where, where do you assign the blame and how much, how much, how much time do you have? <laughs> it's a long <laughs> list. Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens is a great guy to have a butt heavy with, but yeah. outside of that, like, <laughs> you know, we, 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 we were riding the hype train here in Cleveland, but that did not work out whatsoever. He, he was not the leader that we thought he was. Cause you have guys like Baker Mayfield and Jarvis Landry, two kind of hotheads here in Cleveland. Oh yeah. When things are not going well, they are going to turn on that head coach and didn't. Freddie Kitchens was not prepared for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we didn't even Odell Beckham, who one of the biggest drama queens in the NFL. He wasn't even the one that was causing the drama, and it even seemed like a lot of it was between Todd Monken and Freddie Kitchens to the point where like Monken was walking up to opposing coaches saying that the Browns were a complete mess. And really, I, I think in you fairness, wanna... Freddie Kitchens was not ready. <laughs> he he was not ready for the no, for the limelight. No, no. He, he is where he should be. <laughs> yes, he's yeah. he was not ready for prime time. I think a lot of it though came down to and and my boy Warren Sharp's kind of on a oh, similar angle where boy. Freddie Kitchens, uh, you know, when he took over for um, Q, he he installed a lot of like twelve personnel, kind of heavy set keeping things simple for Baker, a lot of play action, give him yep. plenty of protection. And then next year, Monken comes in, bringing his uh, air raid, uh, you know, throw it all over the place. They went to 11 personnel and that seemingly is where things kind of came off the rails. And then later on in the season, they kind of went more back to the Freddie kitchens uh, style where you're loading up the box, getting, getting both uh, running backs involved, load up on the tight ends. And that seemed to be the issue with the Browns. I think the issue is we just got excited after the end of the 2018 season. That, yeah. That's what happened. Well, and it's a great story. Like you want the Browns to be yeah. good nationally because it's fun to have them in the mix. A football coach that looks like you, you know, like that's the that's the real <laughs> appeal of Freddie Kitchens. He really he, he does have that every man appeal. And they didn't finish his character in Madden. We've been watching these Madden <laughs> games for the past three months, and like it's like they the uh, clay sculptor just forgot to do the nose. Well, even yeah, even the the I, Madden I was, people. I was so so mad to, to have to play Madden as Hugh Jackson. And then I was so happy when I got to play as Freddie kitchens and now fast forward. I just, I can't wait for Stefanski. No. So, so you, you were talking about run heavy, tight end, heavy offense, like fast forward to this year. Yeah. Kevin Stefanski. I think, I think he is going to be a legitimate, a legitimate play caller and head coach. Cause we we've been watching him on press conferences. And you know, this is what we do. The Browns, we always win the off season. We always are the best <laughs> in salary cap. These are the only victories that we have. <laughs> NFL draft is our super bowl. Yada, yada, yada. It keeps going. But Stavansky, I've been very impressed with. He's, he's <laughs> the complete opposite of Freddie Kitchens. He's, he's very level headed. He kind of understands the offense and where we need to be. Cause you, you're right. You look back at Baker Mayfield when he had success, he had two running backs back there. He had tight ends protecting him. There, there was a lot of good stuff that you can kind of work from that. And I think that the fan Steve kind of realizes that when you look at his time in Minnesota, that's kind of what he did there. So, you know, you bring in case Keenum to kind of maybe help Baker learn a couple things here and there. And I, I think they're going to be okay this year. Yeah. And you, and kind of transitions to a great stat here, 2019 Vikings, Used three plus receivers on only twenty two point nine percent of the snaps, by far the least in the NFL. Uh, NFL was like sixty four point six was almost the average. Ton of two tight end, ton of two running back sets. Real quick, it just occurred to me, Freddie Kitchens. I think uh, the comparison is Rex Ryan without the without the defensive genius uh, as a coordinator. He's he's a poor man's Rex Ryan. Is that what you're saying? I to pile on your stat. First and second down, thirty-five percent of the time, Minnesota ran two tight ends. The only team that did it more was Philly. Did it like half the time, something stupid like that. But speaking to the idea that they're going to be running a lot of two tight end stats, also seems like he may, might be a little bit more list, more willing to listen to the numbers guys 
up in the offices than Freddie Kitchens. <laughs> Freddie yeah, Kitchens, Freddie Kitchens doesn't seem guy. like an analytics guy. He's a gut handicapper. Yeah, you got Freddie Kitchens. <laughs> yeah, and you've got John Dorsey in the past. And <laughs> they they do not like the nerds of the NFL. Oh so, no. Yeah, we're out on that. We got Paul Paul D. Podesta. We've got Andrew Barry, super super smart GM. So yeah, things things have done a 180 here in Cleveland. And and talking about tight ends. I mean, we we're we're pretty stacked there. I know David Njoku kind of wants out, and that didn't really work out for him. He's kind of stuck with us, but we we've got three probably legitimate tight ends for that system. Well, and and I think uh, Njoku sticking around. It seemed like they at least talked to him a little bit. I think they wanted Njoku to stick around because I do think they want to run a bunch of twelve personnel, and then you have Landry and Odell there with the with her or um, Hooper and uh, and Njoku there. Now, well, Mike, and I, I, I'm going to impress Dave here because it, it's all about the rookie Harrison Bryant. That's the that's the tight end. Yeah. I think they snagged him in the fourth round, and that's the that's their insurance policy against Njoku. And I think absolutely this was this was the most glaring checkbox. And now I know we're zooming ahead to to this year, Sean. But the the checkbox was protect Baker. They bring in tight ends to do that. They bring in tackles to do that with the draft pick and the signing of Conklin, Conklin. from ten, from Tennessee. And even though we are as big of Baker haters as there are in the world, Sean, <laughs> I, I I I went into this thinking like, oh, I can't wait to shit on the Browns again. And the more I navigated through the data, I'm like, oh shit. A, I was like, God damn it, Freddie Kitchens does suck. <laughs> Uh, mainly because he he showed a willingness to not change, which is a problem for me. Always a red reminds flag. me of Ben McAdoo, which was not a good experience. And, and secondly, I I think you know it, <laughs> Ben McAdoo, <laughs> one of the one, one of the only coaches worse than Freddie Kitchens. Li- listen, this has been my life as a Giants fan, but but just just like going out, clearly correcting the problem, bringing in a coach that was going to play to the strengths of the team, and uh, yeah, I I, uh, I found myself quite bearish on a team that. Although they underperformed a little bit last year, going six and ten, I think they really underperformed more in the public's eyes because of the oh, because they were the like the Super Bowl train. sleeper. And when you look at the fact that their schedule projects to get a much easier, according to DVOA, becoming the twenty second, um, th- I think they have an opportunity to regress in the positive fashion and be be a pendulum team this year. Well, in, in 2019 they played the third toughest schedule pass defenses. This year they're projected to play the easiest schedule pass defenses. That's got to help a guy you like You made fun of my Baker is a fantasy steal this year take, Sean. Well, and and I'm still a little hesitant. I'd like to get Dave's take on it. What was was like last year a gap year for uh, Baker Mayfield? You know, guy, he's like, hey, I'm not ready to go to college. I'm just he's gonna backpacking with Andrew Luck I'm for the just summer. Gonna live in my parents' house, smoke some weed, get a landscaping job, and then I'll go to college, and then I'll really kind of get my shit together. <laughs> or, or such an East Coast thing to say, a landscaping <laughs> job. Well, do you, was this just like a little detour in the Baker Mayfield path to glory, or are you worried as a Browns fan? Uh, the the fatalist inside of you, the cynic that oh no, this is just a warning sign for the Baker downfall. So I, I never have expectations anymore, except for the <laughs> off season, which we always win. But so broken, that, like you you, you 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 look at his sophomore year, that was like the Rocky Balboa Clubber Lang year, like Hulu commercials. Oh, he yeah. was not focused whatsoever. <laughs> he had a knucklehead head coach that didn't help at all. So, you know, I, I think that there's plenty of excuses for him. Cheesecake factory, a lot of things in the off season <laughs> that didn't really work out so much. But the, the thing that worries me about Baker Mayfield heading into this year is Van Pelt, our, uh, one of our new coaches, is trying to correct his footwork. And I'm like, yeah, you know, he, he, he played a lot of football thus far in his career. I, I feel like he should have that down at this point. So I love Baker. I think that he's going to be a good quarterback this year, but cautiously optimistic as always. And Sean, you always like to tell me you can't make a gator a pig or no. pig a gator. And I think with, I think Dave just nailed a point I wanted to make, which is the, the, the film nerds will tell you that Baker has Baker has poor footwork, but Baker's poor footwork is a result of him being smaller and just needing to move around more. And that's his game. 
So uh, yeah, I would, uh, that actually concerns me that you're telling me they're trying to correct something that pr- I, I don't know if I would say is a weakness in his game. Well, I, I think it's probably uncorrectable to a certain degree. It's it, like you said, it's kind of how they play. You know who else had really poor mechanics case Keenum. Oh. However, <laughs> if you put them in a dream scenario in kind of the yeah, perfect I love scenario, case Keenum, by the way, <laughs> I like, I like Sean likes him, but he made a comment once that he hated his footwork. So he has to stick uh, well, with it. And, and I think this kind of, it, as a as a Browns fan, I think this is something to hang your hat on. Hear me out. You have two quarterbacks <laughs> with suspect footwork. However, you brought in Stefanski, a guy who has gotten Case Keenum to an NFC Championship <laughs> this game. This is true. Granted, there was a Correct. Minneapolis miracle in there that uh, I, I don't see happening ever in Cleveland. The way you guys kind of the luck goes, but still, I think you saw what they did with case Keenum and even to Kirk cousins to a degree, you give him two very good running backs. You give him a lot of 12 personnel, you give him the confidence in the pocket. And that's what he's felt pressure where there is no pressure. And that's why I think he struggles in 11 personnel. Like there's, there's just too many one-on-one matchups that he's looking at uh, ahead of him. And I think that gets him nervous. And that's when your mechanics start really sliding. So load up the box, give him that play action. You have Kareem hunt pass catching beast out of the backfield. I've been all over him in wow. fantasy. I think he's going to be you huge are juiced up about Cleveland. I, well, there's certain things I really like now when we get to the walking through the schedule and the win loss, uh, maybe I'm not quite as high real quick. A couple thoughts on the defense, Dave, I'd love to get your thoughts on it. I mean, Joe Woods optimistic possibly on, on what he's bringing to the scheme. Greedy Williams, Denzel Ward, not bad cornerbacks. Of course, miles Garrett kind of locking it down there. Uh, it, pass rush. What else? What Local else? hero miles. Oh Garrett. yeah. And, and still, he's still trying to return Mason Rudolph's uh, helmet to him, <laughs> but uh, what, what, what's your take overall on the defense? I mean, to me, just like gut feeling last year, the defense was like, okay. But like they were just in a lot of bad spots, so they were they were mediocre. But they weren't getting much help from the offense. Yeah, so the, the defense, Miles Garrett's a stud. Everyone obviously knows that he's going to have a phenomenal year. I think Olivier Vernon can probably make some type of a comeback. Ryan, I know you're probably not a huge fan of Vernon <laughs> from from New York. That's fine. But I think with Garrett on the other side, he he should be okay this year. I think it's going to come down to the linebacking core. This is a super, super young group. Like Mac Wilson is one of the veterans. He he's, this is his second year and he's trying to lead this squad. We, you know, we, we get rid of our, our veteran leadership on, on the linebacking core and we're, we're left with, you know, we drafted Jacob Phillips. Uh, who out of LSU, we drafted a lot of LSU guys, but I, I think he's going to be okay. we got Grant Delpit out of LSU as well. It's safety, but the, the linebacking core is going to be the make or break for this year. Can Mac Wilson lead that linebacking core? I think so. Cause he comes on our show all the time and I love him, <laughs> but out, outside of that, like th- that, that's going to be a huge question mark for this defense. Well, and, and real quick, it kind of brings us right to some of the the losses and additions. Losses: uh, Demarius Randall, uh, safety linebacker Joe Schobert, uh, cornerback T.J. Carey. He's been cut. Greg Robinson, of course, lost him. And then is that really a loss? I yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a key loss Should or not. Greg Robinson. Yeah, that was a lot of marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, about weed. I don't get these guys. Like it's fucking 2020. Ever heard of a vape? Yeah. They, they gotta weird. be able to figure that out. And then five, Well, dude, he, he got arrested with like 300 pounds of marijuana. <laughs> I mean, that's always the weird. Mexico border. So the, yeah, that, that was a little, uh, little pro- different. <laughs> hire someone to move the product, Come well, on. but also you're doing pretty well. <laughs> Wait till you need the job when you're outside of the NFL. And then maybe you pick up the drug running. He's right? looking for that Nate Newton uh, yeah, least, scholarship foundation. At least Nate was out of the league when he got busted <laughs> with hundreds of pounds of weed. And that was a time where <laughs> weed wasn't legal. So it made sense <laughs> to like sell weed. There was more money in it. You got to do the Al Horford uh, route or not uh, Al, Harrington. Al Harrington, who we had on the podcast oh, yeah. and st- start your own grow up. But getting back to the <laughs> offensive line, uh, should be in decent shape. They, you know, like you said, they drafted the tackle, brought in Conklin, but then they had four of their five opt outs were from the offensive line. That's kind of losing scary. losing a ton of depth there. So very thin at offensive line. 
I, I think we hit on most of the key additions. Carl Joseph, they brought in safety. Andrew Sandejo, who uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess he had some depth there. I mean, what, this is what you can say. And they, they brought in a fullback, Andy Janovich. So, kind of speaking to the what Stefanski may want to do, um, you know, getting the getting the fullback involved, kind of getting that Shanahan well, play and, calling going. And the other, the one last thing to tie up on the two tight ends is Baker plays better with two tight ends on the field as well. I think averaging over somewhere between two and three yards per play more when two tight ends are on the field, which is a crazy gap. Um, and then as far as their defense, and you've got Austin Hooper, who yeah. was one of the, I mean, if you play fantasy, you know, that guy, obviously with the Falcons, he, that's a legitimate, legitimate threat for Baker Mayfield. No, I agree. And I think it's, I think it's more, um, more likely to be a working target. Uh, unlike in Joku last year, uh, I, I just, I, well, there's so many reasons Joku to like him. Catch. Well, that, that it's, you know, he's a Miami guy, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to have any, any hard feelings for him. I, I just think at, at, when you look at the defense, Garrett was at what? Six games. And then on top of that, like, look at that long list of guys coming to help on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, Grant Elpit, he was a guy we talked about as a first rounder LSU. And if they can get some ball control, maybe, maybe cut down on some of the Baker turnovers. I, I think it, it makes the job on the defense that much easier. Real quick question though, Dave. How are we feeling about Jarvis Landry's hip? I know he was on pup. He got taken off, but I mean, I, I as a fantasy guy, I'm kind of worried about Jarvis Landry. He's always been kind of a sneaky play, but this year, new system with that hip injury, limited off season. What what are your thoughts? Now, nah, man, he's good. He's uh he's he's right around hundred percent. He's he's ready to go for the season. People don't realize this, like Landry, you know, out of my like playing with Miami and the dolphins for so long. He he's actually younger than Odell Beckham jr. Like he, not by much a couple months, but he he's not an old guy. Like he he's, he's going to be around a long time. I think he's going to be a fantastic mm-hmm. option in fantasy. If, if you like the Browns, I mean the, the, the dude, especially when he was in Miami, but even more so now here, here in Cleveland, I, I think he's going to get a ton of receptions, especially if you're in the PPE. And Sean, before we go through the schedule, you also have to call it out. But this is totally this is the the textbook post hype sleeper sleeper team. year. The the pendulum swung really hard. They really underperformed. Now everyone has that taste of their mouth. Fuck the Browns. Fuck Baker Mayfield. Fuck Odell Beckham. Fuck Kareem Hunt. Miles Garrett's a murderer. Like arrest the man. Assault. <laughs> great time to buy a stock, Sean. It's a great time to buy a stock. Should we go through the schedule? Buy low, sell high. Let's do it. All right. We you called it out last year, six and ten went way under their nine and a half. This year, the total is eight and a half, minus one thirty five on the over, one oh five plus one oh five on the under. Mm. Five to one to win the division, fifteen to one to win the conference, and thirty to one to win the Super Bowl. First four, Cleveland heads to Baltimore. They then have Cincy on Thursday night. Interesting start to the season at home. And then the Washington professional football team. I'm three for three on that one, Sean at home. And then at the Dallas Cowboys. Well, and they always seem to play the Ravens tough. So would I be shocked if they, if they pull out a victory there and I haven't, I haven't looked at that spread, but if they're getting more than a touchdown, I'm already probably leaning dog there week one, even though it's early. I, that being said, I, Sean, I think we we blew them out last year. Yeah. We oh yeah, destroyed Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Well, and that's and that's how you got to beat that team is they just running the ball, best pound in the, the rock. Season. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that being said, I, I'm going. Uh, I'll go two and two here. Kramer, what do you think? Uh, I, yeah, I think uh, it. It seems as though two is the f- strangely the floor. I think they very easily win those home games. Uh, perhaps they can steal one against the uh, lowly Cowboys. It's going to be very empty in that stadium. Very, very empty. I'll go two and two though. Dave, what do you, what do you got them going here? I've got three wins in the beginning of the oh, season. Like the it. hype train is real. Like I'm going to come out with the Super Bowl predictions. We're right back. Oh no. We oh no. Odell's going to get excited. Dog pound alive and well Colts at home at Pittsburgh at Cincinnati Raiders at home. You know another stretch where I I think they I think this is going to be a tough team to play in Cleveland. I I don't know they could be favored in two of these again. I mean, Cincy, who knows what we're going to get there? I I think this 
I think this is two and two, but with with definite three one upside. I'll go two and two. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. It feels like three and one, not out of the question, but uh, I'll be a little conservative. I've been burned on the Browns before, <laughs> two and two. But again, I, I I wouldn't be in the games. They're dogs. I think they could be, especially if you know, let's say something crazy happens and they don't go three and one uh, in those first four games. I, I feel like they could be a sneaky dog, uh, you know, in that four to seven point range where they could be kind of frisky and maybe someone you, you take to cover a decent number of spreads, but maybe not getting enough of the outright wins. But uh, I, I got them going two and two there as well. Dave, are they, are they getting to the, the halfway point at six and two? I mean, let's be honest. We're we're zero and four at this point, but I, I believe <laughs> that we are going to win three games in that stretch. So yeah, I th- I think we could be at six Ooh. here. That that's not a tough schedule whatsoever. It certainly it, it certainly gives the the Browns an opportunity. Here. Well, and that's where you want to play the Colts. You want to play them at home. Uh, Steelers game should be interesting, and then same I, with I the know, Raiders. I would not assume super high on the Raiders. Just getting John Gruden into no. into any sort of travel situation gives you an opportunity <laughs> for something to go wrong. We got to get our shit going. Yeah, he, he he he's going to Aerosmith concerts with Frank Kelly. I know he's distracted, uh, pre- pretending to have coronavirus again. <laughs> By way, I still can't believe he there, did it. John and there Gruden was something, I, and I tweeted out the photo of just so great. John Gruden from the Corona Hotline with the <laughs> caption "Greatest Corona Actor of All Time." Because uh, there's just something funny about the guy pretending to have coronavirus, w- who was also endorser he, of Corona. He beer. really thought he was being a genius when he did that too. That's the best part. By, next level. By week in the middle of the year, Sean. That's a perfect time. And then you have the Texans. Love the it. Texans at home. Eagles at home. At Jacksonville, at mm. Tennessee, wow. Uh, I mean, certainly. I don't know if we called it out to start, but the schedule definitely getting easier this year. Catching the uh, the South and the NFC East, I, I love this stretch for the Browns. And I think you know if they if they can manage to get to the bye week four and four and come out of it, I think Houston is always beatable, especially when you can catch them on the road. You know, Carson Wentz probably injured at this point in the season, so could be a, a relatively How easy win you. against the Eagles. And then, can they go down to Jacksonville and get a win? Absolutely, especially late in the year. I mean, there are boats down there, and the kind <laughs> that Odell likes to get on and cause horrible Maybe you get a quick ruin cruising. franchises. Uh, I'm going to go conservative because I, I I'm going to go two and two again. I feel like I'm being a pussy here, but I'm, I got him going. I'm six and six right now, Sean. What about you? Yeah, it feels like they split the road and then split the away game. I mean, I, I, that Titans game could be could be tr- a little tricky. We'll see, especially kind of they, they play a similar style, or at least that's what we're expecting from we'll the Browns. If, uh, this year, we so. get a we get Ryan Tannehill or Tannehill, as as Colby likes to call him. Two and two there, Dave. What are you doing here? You could talk yourself into three and one pretty easily. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm actually with you guys here at two, but I think at this point of the season with eight wins. Sean, I think you're going to be like maybe Baker Mayfield's better than Carson Wentz. <laughs> oh yes, that's a take you'll never Just, hear on this podcast. Sean, that's the hottest take we've ever heard. <laughs> even even if, oh, hot, 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 hot. regardless of what actually happens, that's a take you'll never hear come from I, my mouth. I can't wait to talk about Carson Wentz ten years from now and be like, remember when you thought Carson Wentz was good, Sean? I do. And I remember winning two hundred thousand dollars thanks to his performance in DraftKings, oh, and eventually go. leading us to our first uh, Super Bowl of many in the Carson Wentz era. Kramer. I play, do remember didn't that. Didn't even play in the game. Next four. I honestly think Baker Mayfield is going to be a better quarterback than Carson Wentz over their careers. I'm sorry, Sean. All right, I'm sorry I'll you had to hear it. Here. Whatever, whatever sort of metric you want to bet, uh, I, I'm, I'm all <laughs> here in. Here we go. Yes, I'm all in. <laughs> Final four, Kramer. Last four. Baltimore on Monday night at home at the Giants. Tough. Oh, uh, back to back tough games at Giants, at Jets, and then the Steelers to close it out. That's tough because you're getting Baltimore and Pittsburgh at home. Uh, they probably get one of those games, and then they they you know what? Let's have some fun with this, Sean. Let's go three and one. You know what? I'm gonna have him going two and two. Because it feels like this team, this Browns team, will get better, more competitive, and oh, in you're Brown, right. I can't do three and in one, Brown-like two two. fashion, a hair under their win total. So eight and eight kind of feels perfect for me for this Browns team. What do you, uh, Dave? What's your what's your final four there? I got another split. I got them at ten wins, 
for the year. They're going to the playoffs for the first time in a very, very long time. You know, I, I had that written down. I didn't want to offend you, but it's uh, they've been there once uh, since 1999. Now this is interesting too. Yeah. With the, with thanks, <laughs> thanks, Ryan. <laughs> well, I, you know, now that you bring it up, I feel like it's a safe space. Sean, we both have them going eight and eight. Well, and uh, the Cleveland Browns to make the playoffs is only plus one ten. So mm. the market mm. seems seven to be seven teams now. I think they're almost certainly a team that you know, th- you know, they could be the team we're talking about come playoff time that no one wants to see in the first round. I, I think it'll co- probably come down to conference wins. And a couple of tiebreakers as to whether or not they make the playoffs. But if things go well, you don't want to see them in the postseason because that means the pass rush is working and the secondary is shored up. And and if they're playing any sort of above average defense, and the offense kind of just does what we think we all c- talked about them doing, this is a very competitive team. Because don't forget the guy looking over our shoulder right now, Ben Roethlisberger. He's old, and he just missed the season. So who the fuck knows with that team? Lot of a uh, lot of uh, things to figure out. We're gonna move on to the Steelers here in a little bit, but uh, Dave, appreciate you calling into the podcast, man. Make sure you check out all the stuff Dave has going on at BigPlay.com. What, what do you got coming up this week over at Big Play? So we just interviewed James Karinchek, Wild Thing, who uh, he's a relief pitcher for the Indians. Super fun interview. Charlie Sheen was just talking to him, passing the torch from Major League. Uh, got a couple couple Indians players coming up. We got Peyton Hill is hosting a show with us on Thursday nights at six thirty. Uh, super super fun guy. If you remember him, oh, oh yeah. Madden cover, love that His guy. guy yeah, he's one of those day, guys who will get penetration. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. Just had to hit the Madden <laughs> sound drop there. <laughs> oh, he'd, he'd appreciate that. So yeah, he started a new show with us. That's going really well. Check that out, but. Yeah, we've got live shows every night, Monday through Thursday. So if you're if you're into sports, go check it out. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, great site. Tons of awesome content. Appreciate you calling in, Dave, and uh best of luck to the Browns. All right, man. Keep up the good work. DraftKings, baby. The hits literally keep on coming from one MMA event to the next. They grow in excitement and anticipation. UFC 252. Should be a good one. No better place to get in on all the action than with DraftKings leader in one day fantasy sports. I'm already loading up on millionaire makers for week one NFL, already just cranking out lineups after lineups. But again, this week, all about UFC 252. New users get a free shot at $1 million in total prizes. Again, MMA, very easy to play. Pick six fighters, stay under the salary cap. Pop the points. It's just that easy. And again, free shot at $1 million in total prizes. Plenty of other sports I got going MLB, NBA. Sean, please. I rarely do this, but best ball. Best, best ball. ball. Yes. Best the, ball. DraftKings now has Fuck. best ball. We're, we're gonna, I think we're going to got to do a podcast just walking through a live best ball draft over at DraftKings. Download the DraftKings app now and use the promo code SGP to get a free shot at $1 million. In total prize for this weekend's UFC 252 contest, promo code SGP to get a free shot at one million dollars with your first deposit. Only at DraftKings. Minimum five dollar deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Joining us on the line, Steelers super fan and our friend in the <laughs> desert, Scott Baxter Bowser Bowser. How how you living, man? Good, man. Good. I, I just got a. a Steelers COVID mask, so I guess I'm ready for the season, man. <laughs> Hell I yeah. do. I do have a uh, Eagles. How pissed off are Raiders fans? Now everyone's getting dressed up for football. <laughs> yeah, everyone's, everyone's putting their makeup <laughs> on, their face coverings. I realized I do kind of look like a uh, a complete psycho because I caught a reflection of myself, and I had my Eagles COVID mask on. I was wearing my Eagles hat, had an Eagles shirt, just walking around uh, middle of August in Los Angeles. People have no idea. What's going through my head? But I'm just I'm jacked up. I'm <laughs> thinking about football. Bowser. They probably I, thought you were about to rob a bank, dude. Yeah. Like no one would actually dress like this. <laughs> there is there must be a weird moment where bank robberies are probably still happening to some degree. And there's gotta be that awkward moment where they're like, No, I'm not kidding. I'm not making some COVID joke. I'm actually here to rob this fucking place. <laughs> yeah. Bowser, what's the excitement level in Vegas? I know they got the new stadium, but now it looks like 
no fans for the season. I know, I know Vegas is all in on the golden Knights. They really embrace the golden Knights as their team. Raiders kind of a weird team coming in there into the Vegas area. Yeah. Have you, have you seen people getting Raider fever? Where are we at with the Raiders in Vegas? Okay. Uh, there's a, like a, one of the big things in Nevada here is the custom license plate uh, where a lot of people have Knights license plates. I'm starting to see more Raiders license plates here. Okay. So like, I, I've seen a few of those on the highway lately on my way to work and stuff where I'm like, okay. So it, it seems like people are embracing it to a degree, but yeah, no, it's weird. Like, like the hawk hockey is what's huge here right now. Like it's, Stanley Cup fever right now with the playoffs going on, and uh, well, that, that kind of makes well, sense because it's truly Vegas. Ba- Bowser just hit on something that is totally. There's a couple states where a drip, uh, one of the v- drip vectors is your <laughs> your custom license plate. Nevada is a big time custom license plate equal drip squad. Oh, so they're all I'm over gonna, that. I definitely want to get the WNBA Vegas Aces uh, custom license plate when I get my new <laughs> car coming up here soon. So. Yeah, that'll be, it'll be you and uh, WNBA Steve uh, <laughs> battling it out as WNBA super fans. Uh, I was watching some of that WNBA action. Feels like something that can be handicapped pretty easily. I'm gonna have to well, circle and- back with Steve because not to get off on WNBA from the NFL. We do, we are talking Pittsburgh Steelers and Ben <laughs> Roethlisberger, <laughs> but uh, there th- seemed to be some uh, extreme athletic uh, disparities in the in the gameplay between. Uh, hey. Phoenix the and Vegas Dallas. Aces are the only team in pro sports right now that play in a, their home games in a casino. No, that's, so. pre- that's pretty badass. All right. Let's get to football. Sean. Let's get to football. Steelers coming off an eight and eight season in 2019, and uh, they went under their win total of nine. But certainly, a ton of reasons to be optimistic about this Steelers team. I mean, Big Ben was out uh, the majority of the season. Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges kind of cobbled together they, a they season only between. Threw, they only, I, I'm gonna. I, I don't want to stomp on the whole. They only no. threw it for 200 yards three times. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of insane. And and kind me, of. And to me, it's 2020. Tomlin. That would have been bad in 1985. <laughs> right after the invention of the Ford Pass. That was. I mean. Yeah. The St- I, I think Tomlin is almost criminally underrated. You go back in the Tomlin and, and just the Steelers franchise in general. The Steelers have never had a losing season under Tomlin. I mean, even Andy Reid, who had a nice little run there, he had like a four and twelve season in there. He had like a six, a yeah. five and eleven season in there. Well, last season is the season to do that, right? You lose the quarterback and you don't have a backup. They're still eight and eight. I, I don't know how they pull it off. I mean, we're I'm not going to lie. There's been a couple times like last year and then uh, what was it, 2013. Where I was kind of like, oh, just lose, just have a losing year and get the better draft pick. But in this year's case, we're traded for Fitzpatrick. Like, well, you're not going to benefit from that draft pick, so you might as well try and win as many. I mean, win as many as possible. Well, like, yeah, and a lot of people gave them shit for trading for Mika Fitzpatrick. No, that trade was good because they go, oh, you're out of contention. What do you do? Train for him. But now they got Mika Fitzpatrick. They they got TJ. Yeah. They got TJ Watt. They got Devin Bush. Like. These this young core of uh, guys that are just really primed to primed to kind of make a run in on the defensive side. So if you want to find a Steelers losing season, you have to go back to Bill Cower in two thousand three, mm. where they went six and ten. So well, and that you know not to not to get uh, out ahead, but that that was kind of you know between Bush the draft pick last year that they traded up for and Fitzpatrick, they they just went after their weakness. Right, like they just went. That was the problem with that team. So, yeah, yeah I think yeah. The, it's a smart trade. I mean, it's a in the moment you don't ever see first round picks being dealt for defensive backs in the NFL. But when you actually look back at what happened, sure, he was wildly successful. But even so, they still have three years of control. You know, well, well and you look at Fitzpatrick too. The guy's only <laughs> like twenty one, twenty two. He was a young yeah. like guy who entered the draft. So as a twenty two year old Fitzpatrick. Uh, worthy of whatever an eight and eight pick is like from last year. Absolutely. You know, that's worth a top five pick. Yes. Yeah, well, and, and, and especially people always these like draft nerds and everyone else, like, like there's still, even if you have a first round pick, your chances of hitting on a first round pick are still what? Like 25, 30%. Like you have make it's, con- it's, it's the contract thing. And in this case they got that too. So yeah, it's so like, they're, they're fine. They're in a great spot. Interesting thing to kind of look at. Well, maybe eight and eight 
was kind of still in a weird way, really lucky because the turnover margin was plus eight, got very lucky on fumble recoveries that can always regress. I think the counter to that is to the turnover regression that might balance it out is they had the 27th worst starting position on the defensive side of the ball. So like the offense couldn't do nothing. So yeah, the defense had the defensive touchdowns, the return touchdowns, those will regress probably. But if big Ben and the offense can kind of put them in better spots, maybe that balances out what you lose in the turnover. Regression. They were only 0.4 wins lucky according to Pythag. So to your point, like they had some, they, if you just hyper analyze a specific stat, you might identify regression candidates both ways. But if you look at the whole portfolio, yeah, of well, data, they had some bad breaks there too, especially against like Buffalo down the stretch there. Where I mean, that was a very winnable game. So I mean, they could have easily have been ten and six last year. Even I mean, no, it, definitely. And I think a big part of it too, besides the coaching, strong offensive line. I mean, they're Brandon Thorne have established the run. He's got them six overall Ooh. offensive line, and that's what you need. When you have an aging Villanueva is in a contract year. Yeah. You have a guy yeah. like Roethlisberger, you're going to need to protect him, especially with his injuries and his age to me. Like it, it, it's really simple. <laughs> is big Ben going to be the big Ben of 2018 uh, where he's, you know, thrown all over the place. Juju's back in the slot, which I think is great for their, them from a fantasy perspective. Didn't know where he was at, but then Merrill Hodge noted former Steeler. Mm. Um, you know, on the ground, on the cutting edge of concussion research, really a man of many talents. He came onto our podcast and he said that <laughs> he went on a hunting yeah. trip. Eight there at eight to eleven thousand feet. Eleven thousand feet hunting what? trip with Big Ben and said he was he was up there hunting at elevation, which is great because I read in the Football Outsiders chapter how uh, Jay Glazer reported that uh, big Ben's workout regiment included doing a yoga session, playing golf and drinking beer, which, <laughs> you know, kudos, kudos to big Ben. That sounds, sounds like, like a, my, nice my off routine. season. Yeah. I mean, coming back to your point, this is, they had the fourth largest drop off in DVOA in the history of DVOA last year. So obviously you want to talk about a regression indicator. That's it, right? The backup quarterback sucked. This is what happens when you don't have a backup quarterback. Uh, we've seen this situation play out in, in Green Bay. Like when the starter doesn't want to have a any competition, you end up with shit backups, and that's what happened with Doug Hodges and, and Mason Rudolph. And maybe we got tricked, but they were awful. And they the, were the concerning thing, though, for me, is when you look at the the history of quarterbacks this old coming back from a season lost is not pretty. In fact, the only quarterback to really even do it at any level is was Vinny Testaverde. Well, what about? So, I mean, I, I guess I would say my counter would be, what about? And I don't think he will have this kind of year. But what about Peyton Manning coming back after that neck surgery that year off? He was awful. Wasn't he good? Or was that the year after? No, he was awful, wasn't he? In Denver? No, no, I mean, no. He he came back to Denver like he was like fifty <laughs> touchdowns and. Yeah, well, I was. That, hold on, let's look it up. Record. No, his, his last his last year he was certainly it was horrible. But yeah, yeah, that first year that first year in Denver, yeah, thirty seven touchdowns, what eleven interception. Age? How the, old? How old was he? Well, he's I, I don't have it in front of me, but it's similar age of like year fourteen uh, or fourteen season. I mean, the year after was when he really went off with the fifty five and ten. But yeah, he still right. had a yeah, pretty good year. It. This would be the th- that he would be the outlier. Yeah, thirty-seven, eleven, and I would certainly say Peyton Manning. Uh, no, no, I, I give him the nod over Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger, kind of underrated, I, I think, to some degree. He's a guy who can steady the ship, but uh, I love the skilled players around him. I mean, the Chase Claypool draft pick, I like that. But then you have Deontay Johnson, James Washington, get Juju in love the slot. Deontay Johnson, man, like I, I think he's going to be a deep sleeper for fantasy this year. Yeah, and I, and I think Juju is because of his down year last year. They move him back into the slot. Ton of chemistry, ton of continuity with Ben Roethlisberger, and then the tight ends. They got they got Ebron and McDonald, two solid options. They played against a, a, a the fourth largest or fourth yeah the fourth largest box size, and that was part of the reason the that we slot? saw Juju. I think Juju is a is a plus 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 guy catching the ball at the line of scrimmage and making guys move, m- making guys miss. So the fact that those plays just weren't successful for this team. 
Mason Rudolph, Duck Hodges, they couldn't execute those wide receiver screens that Ben Roethlisberger does almost like a no look pass. Well, so it's a big part of the game. It completely removed from the offense. And I think, you know, my well, big, my big takeaway from the season last year is you just have to ignore the season last year. Well, and well you know what? Dude, well, like, Bowser, I, sorry, I real quick, be, real quick oh, to okay. interrupt. Uh, I just want to commend Bowser for not laughing when you said facing a large box. Oh, uh, yeah. Really, largest, real, box. really the largest box. Real <laughs> Bowser knows what to do with the large box. Hey, I'm in my 40s now. I got to be mature, dude. <laughs> He's seen a variety as we all have over the years. Sorry, Bowser, no, didn't mean to cut you off. Well, like I, uh, we don't need the Ben of like throwing big numbers up to be successful this year. Give me 2005 Ben, where first where they won the Super Bowl against the Seahawks. Yeah. And it's just a game manager. Like yeah. I think the defense wow. and the offensive line are good enough that they can win games like that. And then if, yeah, if he's got it in the tank and can turn it on when it needed, obviously great, but I don't think they need to build the team around him like that. And one of the biggest things for this year going into me was that we didn't have the distraction of Antonio Brown going into this year. I mean, everything else going on in the world. Yeah, it's insane, <laughs> but at least we didn't have that guy in there <laughs> causing all kinds of problems. Antonio Brown, greater than coronavirus when yes. it comes to distraction. <laughs> on, the, on the crazy scale, he uh, outranks Corona. And yeah, uh, he's actually crazier than coronavirus. So it's really nice getting him out. More reasons <laughs> to, to to love the prospects of this team: uh, Juju, James Conner, both in contract years. Sean. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, also, Bud Dupree coming uh, in as uh, the franchise tag. He's definitely. Wants to get out of that. He wants to prove his way into the big contract. And I think he might have a chance to earn it this year, especially playing across from TJ Watt, who, in addition, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but a uh, new fullback this year, his younger, his older brother, Derek Watt. So we got two of the three. What? Watt you stole my point about how this is the only team in the league with two Watts. So <laughs> good, uh, good football, Juju. Also brought in uh, Wisniewski, Chris Wormley via trade. Who'd they lose? They lost Javon Hargrave. Young stud, of course, big, on the big, Eagles. That's a big one. I think that'll. That's think, a big loss, yeah. Uh, cornerback Artie Burns, safety Sean Davis. So uh, yeah, Davis and Burns were two high draft picks that never panned out, and that's I mean that's another situation, kind of addition by subtraction. I mean, no knock against those guys, but they just never worked. Uh, Fitzpatrick's the man of that secondary now, and if Edmonds can step it up, now we're really talking. Yeah, and Ed, Ed, my boy Edmonds from yeah, from you're, Virginia, you're Virginia Tech, Tech Hokey, yeah. Keep going, Sean. No, I think that, that I think, was it. All the, yeah. Well, then the only other thing I would point out, and I, I made a note of this because it really delighted me. I think the reason this team, I mean, this th this is the the classic tale of the defense is good because of the pass rush, shoring up the 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 spine with Bush and Fitzpatrick is what has made it go from just being a good defense year in and year out to an elite defense year in and year out. You look at all the underlying metrics. This defense is going to sustain. I don't think this is going to be an outlier. And uh, TJ Watt, did you know he's another guy that the Chicago Bears traded up to draft? <laughs> Mitchell Trubisky. Also, the Cowboys took a guy named Taco that year. Sean, fun Ooh. fact. Uh, I and I think the fact that this defense is almost certainly going to be a, in competition for the elite defense for the the number one defense this year. Even if Big Ben, as Bowser points out, even if he dials it back a little bit, leans on that stable of running backs they have. Benny Snell looked really good last year. He uh, put up almost identical numbers to Connor. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd I, be, I think he could be the lead guy. I'd right? be really intrigued to see what they do. They have three really talented running backs. Uh, Big Ben has talent around him, as, as you point out. Uh, they have some, uh, uh, you know, a guy like uh, Ebron. That's intriguing. So. All of that being said, Sean, I I think the the concern is that Big Ben just takes one shot, and it's not like they fix the backup quarterback. Position. Well, yeah, and he also basically destroyed his elbow just throwing a football, so that's always kind of a warning sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that being said, I, I'm kind of in on this Steelers team, Kramer. Let's let's break down the schedule. Let's break down the schedule, Sean. I wasn't ready for you to say that. All right. Well, the game one. No, I'm I'm here. I'm okay. Here. I'm game here. one against your New York Giants, which Monday night football. Breaking news. I've already bet this. Steelers are three and a half point <laughs> road favorite, which uh, again, I, I still think these week one lines, they they haven't factored in that there's gonna be no home home field. No, and the you, Giants didn't have a home field advantage. To before. begin with. So it's and gotten better now. That that Steelers defense. 
that that turnover. They hungry, haven't seen Danny Dimes, baby. That All turn, right. The turnover machine that is the Steelers' defense is going to go up against two rookie tackles For, with Daniel oh, Jones it. at the helm. Stop it. Good luck. You're being mean now. We we all know that myself, Walter <laughs> Football, golf expert Steve Shermer, and NBA expert Zach Bronner all like the Giants to win the division. At Giants on the nightcap of Monday Night Football, Denver at home, Houston at home, at Tennessee. Interesting start to the schedule. I'll let you go first, Sean. I'll go three and one here. Oh, stop it! I mean, they're going to destroy the Giants, <laughs> uh, and again. The Steelers could be one of the teams that were, were they were always good at home, always had a real legit one of the teams that has a legit home field advantage. So maybe yep. maybe it doesn't translate, but I, I think they beat the Giants. Even though I like the Broncos, I lo- I like the Steelers week two especially, not in elevation. And then I think they they split the AFC South games. So th- I got them going three and one. Bowser, uh, you know. I'd like to go three one, but I'm going to go two and two. I could mm. see a loss of Denver. I could see a loss against Houston. Uh, I, I think it's going to take a few weeks to get it all sorted out. Uh, you mentioned the tight ends, and like this is the first time Ben's had good depth at tight end. But like, like Keith Miller was there for years as just a solo target, but having this kind of depth there, like they, they're going to be able to change a lot of things that they do with the offense. But I think it's going to take until like week four, week five, where it really start clicking. But I mean, not a bad theory. I, we know big Ben likes to go deep into the tight end. Uh, I'm, I, I think I'm with Bowser. I'm going to go to one of those guys who will get penetration. Classic win your home games, lose your road games. Phil next four: Philly, Cleveland, both at home at Baltimore by week eight at Dallas coming out of the bye. Uh, I mean, again, you getting Philly at home. That's going to be the battle of Pennsylvania. We love that. It's gonna be right around election time. Everyone's gonna be excited. I, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them three and one here. I think they lose to Philly and or Baltimore, but not both. Yeah, I mm. like it. I'm three and one as well. So they they you have them losing to everyone but Philly. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I have them beating everyone. Sorry, beating everyone Philly. but Philly. I I th- I think you guys are bold to have them win two. Two of these road games. I, I feel but like I, Pittsburgh's a, a classic team. We we have to remember Big Ben at home is a different animal than Big Ben on the road. But that's Jekyll that's, and Hyde. But maybe that evens out with some of the COVID. I'm shit. Go- no fans. I'm going two and two. Well, you think he won't he's be, not getting pussy, so he's yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's not going to be able to go out. I mean, that's why. Why do you think he grew that beard? Because he was stuck at home with his wife. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Hey, people like he won't. He can't just go out on his motorcycle anymore. With yeah, that. he can't <laughs> cruise. <laughs> he, can't, she, he can't go to Sturgis this weekend to see Smash Mouth. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Man, by the way, clip. real, uh, real shocking moment for me was the fact that Smash Mouth still does concerts, and then to find <laughs> out they're playing a uh, a room that uh, by, I would imagine there's lots of real men that go to Sturgis. Uh, <laughs> yeah. d- wouldn't think that Smash Mouth was a biker band. Yeah, I mean it kind yeah. of. I've never been to Sturgis, but there's certain hey, mystique. Now, you're an all star. What? There's, there's a certain mystique, <laughs> or like you punk ass bitch. Yeah. Now you can't leave. Well, it was Guar. Like, t- I expect to see Zach Wild at Sturgis. Yeah. Sturgis. <laughs> like, was, was like was Guar booked? Like if black. <laughs> you can't. Find, I would rather if I was a biker. <laughs> If I was a biker. Yeah, that was Beavis and Butthead's favorite band, right? Oh yeah. That's if I great. was if I was a biker, I'd rather listen to a Black Sabbath cover band yeah. than Smash Mouth. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? There's uh, a lot of things I'd rather have there. Yeah, I mean, but especially if you're a biker, like you're supposed to be this like badass dude that doesn't no, give dude. a fuck and is an outlaw. You know what? We might Smash be- Mouth is like something you listen to at Target while your wife's getting. <laughs> You know, shapes. We need to get up off our porches. Maybe that's not the way the biker world is. T- Maybe they've taken a turn to identifying <laughs> to their softer, more sensitive sides. The sensitive. Next side. four: Bengals at home at Jacksonville, Minshew Mania, Baltimore at home on Thursday night, the short week. This is the one they get versus the Ravens, and then the Washington professional football team. I've not fucked it up yet. They have three home games. They go three and one here. Three and one, and, and certainly if they won all four of those, I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked. I'm going either. four and zero there. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do it. Give me four and zero there. Oh my goodness! Like you guys are. See, the reason I'm b- being a little cautious here is the Big Ben gets hurt again. 
I just it the cliff go it happens fast. Last four at B- Buffalo at Cincy on Monday night, the Colts at home at Cleveland. Ooh, I hate that spot to close the season. See, I think this is where things might get surprisingly wonky for them. But this is and I'll say wonky. I'll say two and two. Yeah, I'm gonna go two and two as well. I think that uh, Monday night game in Cincy, for some reason, that that seems like a trap game, like out the gate. And Buffalo is always a tough matchup for the Steelers. Just always a tough matchup. So I'm gonna go two and two there too. I mean, Big Ben does tend to own the teams in Ohio, right? That he does. Yeah. Yes, I, I'm gonna go two and two. Steelers to make the playoffs minus one seventy. Uh, to make the playoffs, miss the playoffs plus. Plus one thirty, and that is uh, from that, our good pals over at Odds Shark who have that list. That's so I, I have them going eleven and five, right? I yeah. have I have them going nine and seven. Sean, you have them going twelve. A twelve and four. Twelve and four. I thought I, I thought. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I have them at eleven and five. But you have them three and one at the right. first four. I had them two and two. So yeah, twelve and four. I mean. Give me a little, give me that over, lock that up. See, I mean, we'll, we'll save the locks for the end of the episode, but I, I'm loving that over. And I, the division at plus three fifty. I'm not, I I'm certainly laying two forty for the Ravens feels a little crazy when it yeah. feels much closer to a coin toss with the Steelers at plus three fifty. Uh, I would just be, I mean, the reason if you were a client of mine, Sean, yes. what I would do is, and I'll look into the camera just in case to sell to uh, the clients. I would be very concerned on wagering any sort of future on the over for the Steelers because it you're you're betting like find you're almost better off finding a prop on Roethlisberger to play the whole season. I think it's highly unlikely he plays 16 games, and for that reason, I mean my my estimate of nine and seven feels very conservative. The win total is low for a reason, but I, I think if I if you're making me pick a side, gun to my head, I'm taking the under, Sean. Okay. You because you have them nine and seven. So Bowser, you have them eleven and five, if my math is correct. Yep. Division uh plus three fifty, make the playoffs minus one seventy yes, conference plus twelve hundred, Super Bowl twenty two hundred mm. over at my bookie.ag. Any of those bets appeal to you? I kinda like make a run to the conference finals at least. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Interesting you know, future. Uh, I could see, you know, it's gonna be hard to knock off Baltimore in the top spot in the division, but I could see making it as a wild card. And then get lucky with the matchups and making a little run to the conference championship and having to play a tough road game. Who knows what's going to happen there? So yeah. here, this is where you swing back around on what I just said. That being said, if they make if the, if if the scenario that you and Bowser just highlighted, where that this goes well, Big Ben stays healthy, they are absolutely one of the three teams that can win the conference. Oh yeah, and so, and especially with like. Uh, assuming fans aren't allowed in, in this for the playoff is where, games. This is where I bet the future. This is where I, t- you're not finding too many 22 to one teams. Like I, I strange, like if you ask me, I would say take the Brown. Like I think there's more value in the Browns to win the division over the Steelers. Yeah, I'd rather take the Browns. I'd rather, t- I'm just saying I'd rather take <laughs> the conference or super bowl price for the Steelers, because I think that's where you're finding value. If if things go well, week twelve the Steelers are four to five to one to win the conference. You know, yeah. if things are going well, so I think it, that's that that would be my angle. All right, I like it, and we'll 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 throw out those locks at the end of the episode. Bowser, appreciate you calling in. Make sure you give him a follow on the old Twitter at Scott Bowser. Anything you want to throw out there, Scott? Yeah, uh, my new podcast should be out like sometime mid September. It's a Vegas lifestyle show, uh, kind of highlighting the local culture here, called the Luck Stops Here. So, oh, guys, nice. give, give that, give that a, give that a gander, and give me five stars when you get. To. Well, well, the title Inside Vegas is available if you change your mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we ha- we have, a, we're looking for a host. <laughs> All right, th- <laughs> thanks for calling in, Bowser. Have a good night. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Later. Okay, bye. <laughs> That was a good Bowser appearance. Yeah. I don't think he was using his mic, but sounded clear. I mean, I think he probably was using like the speakerphone on his phone or something weird. That's why we heard the vibrating. Yeah. Are you able to take that out? Uh, I'll, I will comb through it and make sure that the audio is clean. I hate that on podcasts when I hear that.
You want me to start a new video? Yep. We're long right now. Classic bows. BetQL, baby. BetQL, Kramer. Make sure you download that BetQL app available in the App Store or Google Play Store. You want to take advantage? You want to get an advantage on the sports book? Take advantage of the sports book. NBA, NHL, MLB, they're back in action. You need to download BetQL, the only app you'll need to make smart bets this season. They got a best bets algorithm, scans thousands of data points, give you a best bet recommendation for every game and gives you the reason why you should take the bet. Great tool for a uh, sharp public action. If you want that kind of information, a lot of fun little trends that they're always uh, tossing in there and man, they've been on a, uh, I think I just got an email from them. They're, they're five mm. star bets, 67%. It's pretty good. Dominating and looking uh, for tomorrow. They already got their picks up for the NBA in the bubble couple, a uh, couple picks for sure. I mean, they got the Raptors over the 76ers. That makes sense. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> I mean, God, the Sixers have just been God awful. They're really easing your transition to football season. Nicely. Huh? They, they certainly are. I catapult. Exactly. Pull the rip cord, Sean, get rid of Brett Brown. Just admit that you, you know, you don't actually care about the Sixers. No, nah, I like to get angry about the Sixers Beck UL, Like I said, sharp data, all the major sports, NBA, MLB, NHL. And if you live in Jersey, PA, Indiana, Colorado, or West Virginia, you can claim exclusive offers from sportsbooks and use BetQL's data to make the right bets. And if that wasn't good enough, BetQL.co, enter the code SGP20 for 20% off your first subscription. If you want to get the paid service, BetQL.co, SGP20, you get 20% off your first subscription. Kramer, who do we got here? We got the. Baltimore Ravens. For me, the Ravens 14 and two last year, 14 and two over under was eight and a half mm. went over easily. I remember that. I remember being in Vegas, that first game where we were like, holy shit, this came out the new look Lamar Ravens. Jackson. I, he, I mean, his touchdown total for the season was like, I forget if so, someone had that bet and had been talking about it. Constantly. It was comically low. It was it like was 19 16, or something. It was 16. 16 and a half, I believe. And it was just that, that first game, he just lit it up. Yeah. They didn't look back. They didn't look back. It was, it was kind of the perfect season for the Ravens with the exception of uh, what happened in the playoffs. And it was kind of reminding me uh, a little bit of uh, the Packers team in 2011. You'll remember, oh, right? Here we go. Very well, because they got beat by your New York Giants, but they went 15 and one in the regular yep. season. Get the bye game. Get knocked out the following year. 11 yep. and five. 2006 Chargers. They went 14 and two. 11 and oh, five. I see what you're saying. The next here. year, 2004 Steelers went 14 and two. Or no, they went 15 and one. 11 and five the next season. 2001 Rams 14 mm. and two. Seven and nine the next season. The 2005 Colts, they were 14 to 12 and four the next season. Are you calling for regression? I'm calling for regression. The Patriots, of course, in these kind of trends are the, are no, the crazy they, outlier. They don't count. But really, for them, it's like everything, it, it was literally the, the perfect season. And we've already seen the non perfect season in the offseason begin to bear its ugly head with the. Uh, just pray for us, you know, as we go through this stuff. Earl Thomas, of course, I think starting. Starting the jinxed Raven season off. Well, he, he, yeah, maybe, but he also certainly benefited from this coronavirus thing. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like if it wasn't for the sound drop, I probably would have forgotten the fact that uh, Earl <laughs> Thomas got busted having <laughs> hooking up with a chick and his brother. Never forget that. Like, kind of somehow involved in the same bedroom with the kind of the, the baby mama coming there, pulling a gun on him, uh, realizing that it was he accidentally was loaded and then, and then asking for people's prayers, thoughts and prayers while they went through a, a, a tough time. Well, I mean, like you, uh, thoughts and prayers. Some, sometimes you go through some shit and he's been through that before. So I'll, I'll, I'll let him lead his own journey. Well, but truly, I mean, the Ravens prayers got answered last year in a huge way. They scored on 57% of their offensive possessions in 2019. I mean, that's insane. Like that was what the 2007 Patriots were doing as far as highest scoring rate per drive. And that was the highest since 2000. So I think 
it kind of almost gets lost because the the Patriots who was like down the field throwing yeah. with Randy Moss, but the Ravens were on a similar tilt there. They were just dominating, uh, you know, getting out early uh, and, and then just never looking back. Much like the season itself. Uh, but the, it's kind of what they were. Th- I mean, they executed on the plan. It wasn't like they were a tremendously lucky team. They had an easy schedule, but part of that reason it shows up as an easy schedule is because they were against all of the teams they played. I think at the end of the day, they, you know, Greg Roman has done this before where he's actually built an offense around what the ta- the talent he has. No, and, they, they did a great And job. one of the areas you, you see this is the, the pistol formation. They deployed the pistol formation 53% of the time. Do you know how much the next, uh, the next team, the number two team, how often they deployed it? 6% of the time, Wow. the Arizona Cardinals. Kyle. So <clears throat> I think when you, when you look at the way that they executed the offense and how, you know, sure it was running the ball and slamming it down team's throat, uh, but it worked and it was them being super aggressive. Uh, they effectively broke the aggress the coaching aggressive meter, the football outsiders created because they went for it run through a motherfucker face. They went for it on fourth down 24 times and converted 17. Yeah. Now the problem with with kind of following the analytics in that regard is that when it fails in the postseason, people question why you go for it. Why are you so aggressive? You you go zero and four, and it doesn't look so smart. But when you zoom out, it's it's probably the right thing to do. It's so like me playing blackjack. Everyone like, why do you keep doubling up? Why do you keep pushing? Because I know <laughs> that's how you gotta. That's what you gotta do. You gotta keep loading up. And yeah, sometimes you'll get burned, like against the Titans. But really, if you want to go for it again. But no, why is no this, risk it? No, but I, but I hear in your tone you're going down the path of they had an outlier season Definitely. and they're going to regress. Definitely. I mean, again, like that that Patriots stat again. They had a historic season. They had a perfect season. Lamar Jackson most rushing yards all time at the quarterback position. And we've seen these guys who have a shitload of carries. The next year they either get hurt, they get injured, or they just don't come anywhere near that hurt? production. Are you injured, Mark Andrews? Had ten receiving touchdowns. You know what? One of the player props I love taking the under on Mark Andrews touchdowns. He had ten last year. His line is set at nine and a half. Like they're just not going to be able to do that. And again, their scheme is something that I think after seeing it for an entire year, teams are going to be able to adjust. And so the Ravens, smart coaching, they're able to adapt. Greg Roman's still there. Greg Roman's still there. And what they're going to do is they're going to try. Harbaugh himself said it. The next step for Lamar is the deep ball. I think that's where you're going to get a little bit of the hiccups. So I uh, think they're going to be would, good, would, but they're definitely going to regress from that 14. Let's, two. let's play this game. If any other quarterback performs this well with the receivers that he has, which I would ask you right now, fresh off of preparing for this team, name four receivers on this team. Yeah. Name two receivers on this team. Well, Hollywood Brown and Willie Snead. Those are the two that jump out. Of course, out. of course. And then Sim Mark God Andrews. himself. Yeah. The point being, it it seems as though that is the next step, right? You have Hollywood Brown in his second year. You have you still have Willie Snead. You have uh, I'm blanking on his name, but they drafted a kid. This is a. I think this is one of the the most underrated pieces of Lamar Jackson's season is that no one is no one brings up the fact that he doesn't have pass catching talent around him. Because if you match up the receiver room, the Baltimore Ravens Ravens have with any other receiver room in this division, they're the worst. They are number four for being such a dominant favorite in this division. They have the clear, the clear disadvantage at the pass catching talent. Well, I mean, I I would, I would compare it to who did, who did Michael Vick have in Atlanta receiver, Algie Crumpler, baby. Well, I mean, can you, can you compare him to Mark Andrews, Roddy white? Yeah, I, I don't know. I would say the fact that you're a running quarterback just makes it so hard on the defense. But yeah, we've no, seen this in the history of the it, NFL. It's just not sustainable. It's tailor made for the tight ends and the running backs to be the clear advantage play. Yeah, to your point, will will they progress or will teams catch up? We'll see. I mean, I think the conventional wisdom only almost feels like people are like, oh yeah, they they got figured out because they lost in the playoffs, and and for that reason, it almost it's impossible to look at a team with a win total of 11 and a half and, and go into it thinking I'm going to want to buy this. Yeah. 
So I, I came in through with the same lens as you. The one area though, like again, they they don't they don't have a tremendously difficult schedule. Uh, they they bolstered what was their strength last year in the running game. They brought in J.K. Dobbins is going to look really nice running in this offense with Lamar Jackson. And yeah. I sure sure you can bet on Lamar Jackson to get hurt. And it would be yeah, I would remind you that you just picked the uh, Ben Roethlisberger to go twelve and four. So I think just playing playing the cards, yeah, playing, I mean, playing the give, averages, and seeing that they brought in a guy like Calais Campbell, who I know you like, and I know yeah, you know he can fan. be a transformational player on that defense. They drafted a guy like Queen. They realized that they got their ass beat in the playoffs because they let another team do to them what they do to other teams, and they fixed that. And so I don't see I I don't see where the weakness is. And other than the oh Lamar is going to regress. Sure, he might regress, but just like Patrick Mahomes was going to regress from 50 touchdowns, he still had a damn good year. Yeah, so I I think I think we're in agreement that he's going to regress. What I think is the difference is is that the the Chiefs offense can still succeed without Patrick Mahomes throwing 50 touchdowns. I don't know if the Baltimore Ravens offense can succeed without him running for 1200 yards on 176 carries. That's what I think they're going to have trouble replacing because that's how you get those. You're, you're, you're setting yourself up for favorable situations because a you're, you know, like you're just, you're getting easy first downs. You're getting design runs and everyone likes to compliment Lamar Jackson. Like he does, he's good at not getting hit. It's like, He's, you guys keep saying that until he gets hit, until he gets injured. Well, and I'm, I have not brought that up yet, but he he does. Yes, he doesn't. He doesn't that's get a, hit like a, Vic used to. I mean, if you want to compare him to he Vic, has a bigger, he has a bigger frame. Vic was a. I mean, Vic ran into contact way too much early. Way too much. But I would say you can't like the NFL. Just there's a reason why this has never happened. Where you know, like if he has another 170 uh, attempts and 1200 yards, then I'll say this guy truly is something different. And I was way off. I just don't think he's going to be able to have that many rushing yards. And I think the def- the offense is going to suffer because of it. And, and my angle, like is they more don't have your, you're pointing it out. They don't have amazing receivers to help carry the deep ball. Well, and I think they, I, I do think they have, they've positioned it to where it could succeed. We'll, we'll see how Hollywood Brown does with a more workload. If he can stay healthy, there's questions there for sure. But they were fourteen and two without any of it last year. Is the point? So if, even if it just takes a small step forward, and again I circle back to the glaring weakness on this team was the run defense, twentieth in rush DVOA on the defensive side of the ball last year. And again, they did nothing but look to attack that that weakness, uh, like they do every offseason. They seem to be one of those teams that does well in the draft. They always seem to get value picks, and I think they went after that that angle and. and Calais Campbell is gonna is gonna fix some of those problems. The rookie from LSU Queen is gonna fix some of those problems. So I think whatever regression, we agree, right? I I'm with you. Lamar Jackson takes a step back. I don't think he performs quite the level he did last year, uh, especially from a fantasy perspective. And I think a lot of that is the amount of touchdowns he scores. But but they were also putting up 50 points in the National Football League, and sure, maybe they take a step back to 38 points. It's still pretty damn good, and I think the defense takes that bigger step forward. This is going to be a five, team five and one in one score games and a plus 10 turnover margin. And, but you can explain that with good coaching and always a top five special team. Like I, I hear you, and I think for some team, some teams are are more regression proof than others, uh, specifically ones that. You know, I, at this point, I really only hate half the Harbaugh's because John <laughs> Harbaugh, I have no beef with. He's a he's an, a, a superb coach, and I think he runs a tight ship. And I think for that reason, things like close wins, he makes good in game coaching decisions. He's the bizarro anti Andy Reid. He's making the aggressive call. He understands when to call timeout, and that's how you win close games. So that's how I explain that to myself. That's how I, I backdoor that one from being a regression indicator. So Sean, we should probably have we already gone through the players? No. Hit on hit on hit on who you think's key losses, key additions. No, I mean I, I threw out uh Calais Campbell. That's a big one. I, God, think, I love that pickup. I think strangely picking up a guy like Fluker, who is just he's not the best pass protector, but he's an absolute mauler. That could be something. And then uh, Derek Wolf is a guy we've seen play. And Baltimore has a tendency for b- pulling pulling guys who, towards the end of their career uh, into situations where they perform. 
And so I, I think that those are some serious, uh, some serious add-ons. And then, you know, when you look at the losses, Brandon Carr, Hayden Hurst, that could be a big one. They didn't really use them all that much. So, uh, and then they had some opt-outs, but war- warmly, uh, Tony Jefferson got cut. Michael Pierce, uh, the other the loss is not not as key. I think the Hayden Hurst one. We'll see. Can they be as multiple? Do they have the tight end depth still? Because at the end of the day, you pointed out very early on, they're they're. Their plus uh, attribute that you know see we'll see if the the league catches up and the league adjusted. But when they have multiple running backs in the backfield or multiple tight ends and and that kind of that pistol formation where they're going to run out of most of the time, but when they pass, they're going to really destroy you with the tight end. Did I say something funny about the tight end? No, no. I I I'm just I, I, I think they're I think they're closer to an eight and eight team than oh, a twelve wow. and fourteen. Oh, see, I think you're bordering on the uh, the heat that I was getting from my Chiefs go ten and six day. Because well, I luckily, think, luckily Alex is not a uh, I Ravens it, fan. I think it's hard. He's I not going to get in your head on Twitter. You right? have a you have a small. Uh, <laughs> I think there's a. Uh, Let's go through the schedule sure. because I think the schedule is pretty easy. And I think that's the part that makes it really hard for me to buy into this being a, a full on regression year, but uh, they obviously regress and and it's obviously crazy to want to take it. To, they won 14 and two last year. They were the yeah. expected wins were 13.4. Not so bad. Uh, they went way over eight and a half their win total this year. It's 11 and a half. And that's just, cr- that, that's just such a big win total. The only team you're ever going to be successful taking over 11 and a half wins is a team with Tom Brady and bill Belichick. And we did that for years, Sean, Cashed that was, it. that was easy money for any of these other teams. It's a baby fucking wheel, I'm, man. I'm going to uh, revert back into my, my just basic statistical analysis shell. And that is when you look at the highest win totals on the board, you're going to have a bias towards the under. And when you look at the lowest, you're going to have a bias towards the over 11 and a half is a lot minus minus one ten on the over minus minus one twenty on the under. So slight juice there. Minus two forty, Sean for the division. That seems crazy. That's three ugly. to one Don't for the conference, that. six and a half to one, three for the to Super one Bowl. for the conference that there's no value there. That's insane. Well, I think people are, you know, they're they're The sharks are in the water when, with the Patriots out of the uh, competition or so people think my man cam showing up though, Cleveland. At Houston, Sean, week two, Kansas City on Monday night. At w- what did you? Oh, you said Cleveland at home. Cleveland at home at Houston. Kansas City on Monday night at Washington, the professional Washington football team. Ah, uh, I'll say, hmm, this is interesting. Ah, uh, what do you got him going three and one? I assume, Ryan. You, you know, I, I don't see. You know, if you want to argue. I don't want to get too deep into the schedule, but I don't think Houston's the kind of team that beats them. I think well, they that's have, in Houston though. I know, but I don't, I just don't think they can exploit the, the I don't think they we'll have to have the dome open because of COVID and, and September in Texas, that might be a little hot a little warm. Uh, can I, I'll, I'll say they go three and one. I'll go two and two. Really? I, I have, I have a hard time finding two losses there next for Cincinnati at Philly. Speaking of Loss. losses, Pittsburgh at home by week at Indy. Who another two and two run here? Indy and Philly can probably play the game needed to beat Baltimore. I think they win the divisional games at home though, and uh, I'm gonna go two and two as well. Next four, Sean at New England, Tennessee at home at Pittsburgh. Revenge game on Thursday night, Dallas. On Thanksgiving, I assume. Wait, no. I think you have. Uh, I think Raven Steelers might be Thanksgiving. Oh, that's yes, November twenty right. sixth. That is uh, Raven Steelers. Ravens at Thursday night Thanksgiving, and then the following Thursday they play Dallas on normal rest for them, and Dallas, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So uh, again, at New England, Tennessee at home, at Pittsburgh on Thanksgiving, Dallas at home th- the following Thursday. I'll go. Uh, I don't know. I'll go three and one here. Call me crazy, but maybe this is the second half of the season. They get it going. They a are bit. chomping at the bit to get a win in new England. Now that Tom Brady's gone that lot of, and then, but are they looking ahead to the revenge game against Tennessee at home? It's not a look ahead spot. Cause it's not a divisional spot and you're coming, you're playing the Patriots. I agree. I, agree. I, I don't think you can, I, I think the, 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 I think Tennessee but is, it, are is they, the sandwich spot, right? It's mm. sandwiched between two you're right. Steelers. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go two and two. The more I think about it, the more there's just, there's a lot of opportunities to fuck this up. I think, 
I think short, they, uh, short Thursday game on Thanksgiving in Pittsburgh. I think this is a section where we're talking about the grit and determination of this team. But I that I would circle that Tennessee game as a game that scares me. They're just such a strong home team. It's hard to. Uh, I'm gonna. You know what? Three and one. I'm gonna go two and two. I think they win in New England and then get the home games and lose to Pittsburgh at Cleveland on Monday night. Jacksonville at home. Giants at home at Cincinnati. I'll shock the world here because oh, I've been down on Baltimore. <laughs> I'm going to say uh, four and zero oh here to close it out. Ten and six. Four and zero. Oh, I, I will say three and one. So what do you have, Matt? Eleven and five. I have them eleven and five. All right. A hair under their win total. I like What'd the you under. Have go ten and six. I like the under. Like I could, I could make a case that that schedule nine and seven. I, I think ten and six is a good. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with either of our predictions, and I think, uh, you know, for that reason, w- with whatever bias I applied to this. Again, eleven and a half. It's a big total. You can't you can't go over that. You're not gonna you know what you're not gonna do in the National Football League, Sean? You're not gonna get rich taking over eleven and a half. No. Uh, in the win totals with like how crazy just in general. I mean what's what is there uh, and, and here won't make the playoff, Sean? Because that, that's plus four fifty, that's talking to me a little bit. The problem is with that seventeen uh that seventh team, they would probably have to go eight and eight. You you got to look up and down the AFC and really tell me like even in your boldest Lamar regresses scenario. No, but or, I mean, so between these two, make the playoffs at minus seven seventy five, or miss the playoffs at plus four fifty odds, courtesy of Odds Shark. I, I mean, I'm taking miss the playoffs at plus four fifty. I mean. Yeah, that's not. I mean, of course you are. You're not laying that. It's just I I don't know how they miss the playoffs. I I really don't know how they missed the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, again, plus four fifty. I would take Steelers to win the division before I would probably take Ravens to miss the playoffs. Uh, and you know, there's only a hundred different um, price point there. All right. Before we get to the final team, the Cincinnati Bengals get to talk about our good pals Ace. Ace is the place if you want to start your own sports book. All right, you've paid a bookie before. Why not be on the other side of the action? Start your own sportsbook today over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. Get started today over there, and Ace is offering up to six weeks free. Plus, Ace offers live betting and an amazing mobile experience. Top notch customer support. Going 24 7, some of the sharpest lines in the industry. You don't need to know anything about setting a line. They got an all inclusive professional betting site with all the lines updated to the second wagers graded immediately. They do all the heavy lifting. So easy. You just got to be the bookie. Aceperhead.com slash SGP up to six weeks free. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. Final team, the Cincinnati Bengals coming off a once again disappointing six and 10 season. Six, two and 14. Oh, sorry. I was looking at the Browns there for a second. Two and fourteen. Their win total was at six. Uh, well, short of that. Kind of a uh, again. It seemed pretty. Not often you see a two and fourteen and a fourteen and two team in the same division. You're right. It's impressive. Pretty spread out there, but it was pretty clear early on that the Bengals were just out on the season. Although early, I mean, they almost beat the uh, Seahawks in Seattle, and I know I fell victim to it. I'm like, oh, maybe they got a little bit of mojo here. Veteran quarterback, new system, and then it, it just pretty much came off the rails from there. Well, I, yeah, I mean, they, I think they were strangely, what, uh, I, I have it written down, zero and seven in one score games. Yeah, so, so uh, I mean, that's so that some of that should work out a little. But bit. But it worked out for them, right? Because they got their quarterback now. They got so Joe Burrow, aka Stogie Joe. Huge fan of Joe Burrow. I'm optimistic on him long term. However, this season, I mean, this is this is the horrific seasons of all seasons for, for you to start as the number one quarterback, the rookie overall. I mean, you're just not going to have any preseason games. You're not going to have any time to prepare AJ green. You have a 31st ranked offensive line, Tyler Boyd. You have some, some guys around you, Joe Mixon, John Ross, certainly some uh, T Higgins, the draft pick here. Do you know who Lou Anarumo is Kramer? Yeah, I do. 
You do. You know him because he was the defensive backs coach briefly for the 2018 Giants. Not something you want to remember. He was the defensive coordinator last year for the Bengals. Season to forget. Yeah. 2017 defensive backs coach for the Dolphins. Basically from 2012 no. to 2017. Again, not a great run probably for them and then the Purdue defensive backs coach oh. for a long time. Uh not really what are they doing on the defensive side of the ball? Like how can you with a bad offensive line and yeah. and a defense that just has a ton of question marks, linebacker lowest grade over the past two years, pro oh football goodness, focus, which is hating. So line, much hate. Linebacker is not the biggest of position these days, but I mean, you could really make a case they're gonna be the, the worst team in the NFL pretty easily. They just because quit, they have a horrific didn't quit on Zach Taylor last year. That's overtime true. in the in the second to last game against the Dolphins, and then they won their final game against the Browns. Yeah, I just don't. Um, Part of the reason they sucked so hard last year is he completely lit his playbook on fire halfway through the year and changed his whole scheme. <laughs> which, in the grand scheme of things, but pun, no pun intended, you probably a positive attribute for a coach to have willingness to adjust. Uh, I I think on the average he's got more weapons than your typical first round pick. That's true, but I, I would say the offensive line to me is is the red flag. Like you need time. Every every NFL rookie says, wh- "What do they say when they're talking about the NFL? What's the one thing they always Th- point out?" This at? is not a regular rookie. This is Stogie fucking <laughs> Joe. But how Craig, many other dudes are are lighting up college football and straight up and literally straight up uh, lighting the light lighting the cigar? Are you kidding me? But you need time to process. You're coming from the college to the pro game, and as much as we love Eddie O and everything they did with that LSU Hold offense, that uh, I, I agree with Eddie O. We need football. <laughs> I just think he's walking into a horrific situation. I think there'll be like a sneaky dog later on in the season, maybe as they get their shit together. But early, it's just brutal, man. The schedule's pretty tough as well. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I think they definitely um, they get some help on the on the uh, on the line. And you know what? We'll see. Well, I think the offensive line is one of those areas you can talk about on paper how they they got guys back. Um, uh, you know. We'll see. They they what was the uh, who they lose in the preseason last year? The tackle. Uh, I'm blanking. I'm giving. I'm giving up on my notes. I've lost. Isaiah everything. Prince. He opted out. Offensive tackle. Uh, cornerback Drake Kirkpatrick. They lost. Uh, Tyler Eifert's gone. B W Webb is gone. Uh, linebacker Nick Virgil. He's out. Cornerback. De- I don't even know. Jonah Dar- Williams, Darquez Denard, Jonah Williams, Andrew Billings, all out should be a key addition to this team. Oh, you're right, because he went out last year in classic Bengals fashion before the season even got started. So picking up him, uh, get, getting uh, Glenn back from whatever the fuck the CTE he was suffering from for most of the season. I'm sure he'll be fine. The point being, there there's opportunity here. Uh, they have some dynamic, uh, or at least a dynamic tight end in Usama. He lit up the Sims. <laughs> we got we got to keep referring to those Sims well, every they, time. The tight end they drafted, I, I think they're probably pretty high on it. And T T Higgins, he's gonna be fun. Well, again, T Higgins is the class, or, or certainly has potential. Well, we love receivers like T Higgins, right? He ran a slower forty time, and that's why he went from a first round guy to a second round guy. Typically, when that happens, I'm I'm gonna guess this guy knows how to run a route because he was getting open at the college level. We saw him show out at Clemson. This was a good receiver, and sure, he was playing with other good receivers, but I'm gonna guess he does something pretty well. So I, I think uh, you know, for for some of the same reasons, you might look to uh, talk about regression when it comes to the Ravens. You have to talk about that same regression when it comes to this Bengals team. And I hear you, Sean. Like the offensive line is is a big time question. But horrible offensive line and rookie running back or rookie quarterback, just gigantic red flag for me. And then uh, you and their defense, like it's not, it's not one of those situations where it's like, yeah. okay, the offense is going to be, they have good skill position players, but they're, I'm worried they're not going to be able to take advantage of them. And, and they're, they're one of those teams where the defense was uh, atrocious uh, 31st in DVOA. But you look at that red zone defense. They were 12th. You look at their pressure rate. They were 12th. This is a team that th- there might be something there. We'll see part of it. 26.2 was 26.2 points per game. Part of it is that they were just such a dumpster fire on offense for so That's much true. of the season. It certainly doesn't help. And, and I, again, I think when you look at a team like that and you look at a little like 
fucking whippersnapper head coach who looks like he spent time in a locker for the, for the fact that this team was fighting at the end of the year. Something, but Ryan at plus six hundred to make the playoffs, the Bengals over at Odd Shark plus six hundred. Interesting. I mean, there's there's so much. Uh, you there's know, so Zach, many other plus six hundred bets. Zach I like. Taylor once had lunch with Sean McVay, <laughs> who made the playoffs. When when will people start stop pointing out the fact that they were close to Sean McVay and and part of the Sean McVay coaching tree? I think after this season, I don't know. We should pro- uh, one l- little quirky thing I pulled out of the chapter that was intriguing to me is they uh, they had a stretch. Well, one I wrote down. My the first note I wrote down was maybe Marvin Lewis was good, as a joke. All right, they had a stretch last year where they went forty two straight drives in the second half of games without scoring a touchdown. Yeah. That's insane. That's probably that's uh, absolutely. I mean, you want to talk probably about up there with like the Ravens dominant touchdown performance. You feel like they're, they're going to get that going. The and other on way, the season, they went 12 out of 85 in terms of converting second half drives into touchdowns, 12 out of 85. Stogie so, Joe coming to town. Stogie Joe. I mean, if nothing else, the guy's got some moxie, at least should we go through the schedule? Let's do it. As you mentioned, they went under their win total of six last year, going two and fourteen, getting the first pick, getting Stogie Joe, getting the Ohio kid. Apparently, T. Higgins also Ohio kid, so there's that dynamic too. Skyline Chili, they uh, delicious. They're they're both Bengals fans from childhood. Imagine that. That's pretty awesome. Imagine finding two people that made both made it to the NFL growing up as Bengals fans. Well, and Joe Burrow had a great tweet saying that he feels for all these uh, college athletes that aren't yeah. getting able to play because the the uh, school officials are fucking cowards. And he pointed out that wow. uh, if, if it wasn't for his season last year, he might be looking for a job. And yeah. it's kind of a crazy thing to think about. Like that's the risk with him. He only really had one productive year. Certainly, one year a, big, that pops certainly off, a big red flag, but I mean, imagine like we could be missing out on a Joe burrow, yeah. big 10 pack 12. Maybe there was someone on there unlikely because it's pac 12 and big 10, but still there may, there could have been, they're dead to Sean. There could have been, I I no longer want to discuss them. Uh, There could have been some sort of Heisman out of nowhere candidate at the quarterback position that makes a crazy one. I mean, Justin Fields and maybe Ohio state figures out a way to play, but it's not looking great right now with them canceling their season. Maybe they do join the big 12, but it's not a good Justin Fields. Like what, what's a guy like him going to do? I don't know. He he did not seem pleased. I mean, he's still going to be drafted early because he's. But maybe the X. Maybe we have spring football. Meaningful spring football, Sean. No, not f- not for the Power Five teams. No, I mean for the XFL for these players that want to go play. Yeah, that would be. Uh, I think if someone threw that wanted- out there on Twitter that <laughs> bubble d- that Disney. the XFL should just bring in the um, the draft eligible players. Why the fuck not? And, and run an XFL bubble. Yeah, they don't want to get hurt. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Five and a half is. The if tone. you don't want to, if you're afraid to play football, you don't want to be in the NFL. I, if you're like, I'm going to not get injured. If you're opting out because you're scared to get injured, or you're like, oh, this is good. I, I'm not going to. Those guys aren't going to dominate at the next level. I mean, like best- that's just you don't you don't have that attitude. If you're scared to play in this environment, you're not going to succeed at the next level. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. You just aren't. You have to be. A fucking maniac psychopath. Yeah. But I mean, there is the psychology of these guys that are opting out that they just wanted to avoid injury so they can get paid. That's not the mindset you need to have when you step on the football field. Yeah, if you're worried about getting paid and worried about getting hurt, then you have no business being yeah. in the National Football League. You when hurt- a gladiator walked out into the arena, he didn't go, you know, I could probably get some guaranteed money if I just sat this one out. Look for a bigger payday. Look, and Marshawn Lynch didn't tell everyone to, to take care of their their money first. He said, "Take care of your body, then take care of your money." Yes. Run through a motherfucker face. Does that sound like a guy who's shying away from contact <laughs> over and over? All right, five and a half over minus one thirty five under plus one hundred five. Did I type that twenty two to one to win the division? Did I type <laughs> that right? I must have typed it right. Six thousand, six thousand to win the conference, ten thousand to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, there are crazier things you can bet on, right? Bengals win the division. Well, you like the Ravens regression. Big Ben gets hurt, and Baker is Baker. I I hit Colin Morikawa at thirty-five to one, Ryan. I thought it was twenty-five to one. No, it was thirty-five. Oh, now it's thirty-five to one. Yeah. 35 to one. That's what it was when I gave it out in the podcast. Oh, I don't I know if you, you listen to the podcast, Ryan, but oh, um, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I mean, I like I like picking a guy to win a major over over the Bengals winning the division. Feels like because it's four good days versus sixteen great weeks. I'm looking at it right now. It is twenty two to one. Twenty two to one. Over wow. at my bookie dad AG. Plenty uh yeah, plenty of time for that to normalize. <laughs> First four, Chargers at home. At Cleveland on Thursday night, at Philly, Jacksonville at home. They, that's not a that's not a ge- generous start for this team. I mean, team. you're uh, Joe Burrow is going to have twelve NFL practices, and then his second <laughs> Melvin his Ingram second, and Bosa. Yeah, and then his second and then Miles Garrett. Yeah, and then his second week, they're going to have what two days of practice. I, I mean, oh, I you lo- were going a different angle. No, I would, no, no. I'm saying, but yeah, wake up call by that Chargers defense <laughs> playing in front of an empty crowd. <laughs> Chargers sweet spot. I mean, Kramer, how do they get to, I'll say one and three, but that to me even feels like a stretch. You seem higher on the Bengals. Are you, are you pulling the trigger on two and two? No one and three. Okay. One and three feels generous. Like they could easily lose all four of those games. I think there's opportunity for this team to become good. I don't think they're going to start good. And I certainly don't think it helps to face those pass. Well, We'll see if if the Eagles have a pass rush this year, but assuming Fletcher Cox is there, Malik Jackson should be healthy. Uh, those are three teams that can get after the quarterback, and you know, he's certainly going to be tested early on. And we're going to see how good that offensive line is very early. Next four, Jesus Christ, they did not give him a nice schedule at Baltimore, at Indy, in Indy, not where you want to be. I mean, Baltimore, another team that pr- projects to have a decent. Pa- Cleveland at home, Tennessee at home. Oh, and four. Mm, no, they're going to beat. They're going to, they're going to win. I think they, uh, they win one of those home games. Let's go one and three. I'm telling you this offensive line and, and Joe burrow, just not having a full, I mean, it's no but, fault of his own. Like if he, if he would have had some preseason games, a little seasoning on him. No you could have talked me into like a, a six and 10, seven and nine. But without that, they're like they're a four-win team at best. At ball or uh, at P- sorry, bye week at Pittsburgh at Washington. And you want to talk as much as Washington probably is going to suck this year. That front seven is legit good. Well, again, they just keep going after just juggernauts. Then the Giants come to town, so you have one winnable game in there at Miami. Uh, I think I think there's two. I think they win two of the Washington, Miami, New York Giant games. I'll uh, say one and three. I'm, I'm going to well, that's in Miami though. Yeah. I, I, and I, it'll be interesting. Joe Burrow is going to have a g- couple games where he balls out at this point in the season. Now that's we're true. after the bye week coming out of the bye week It's not great. They see Pittsburgh first, but I guarantee they have, they have opportunities here in the Washington giants, Miami stretch to go against some very weak secondary. All right. You talk to me in it. I'll give them two wins there. Then they close out with Dallas at home, Pittsburgh at home on Monday night. That's a big time spot right there. We'll see if they can stand up and who knows big Ben, will he still be standing at Houston, Baltimore at home? They finish out with three home games. So they have, this no. is, a, they have another opportunity here to no, close have, out the season. Oh, you mean three out of four, three out of four home yeah. games. I don't know, man. Uh, one and three. <laughs> I just don't see it. I, I love Joe Burrow. He was so fun to watch in the Madden Sims. I think they go two and two here. I think they finish the season on a, a you know a bit of a relative heater. I'm going to say six and ten on the year. Oh, so you haven't gone over? You're a fucking maniac. What do I have, Matt? Four and twelve. Uh, you have them going. Oh, you finished one and three. I'm sorry. You have five and eleven. Five and eleven, really? That's high. Well, I swayed you in one of the. Yeah, sectors. you're right. I'm going to knock him down. That one you swayed me. That that Giants area, um, <laughs> they'll still beat the Giants, but they're I'm, so you're going. I'm knocking it one one down there. Four and twelve. I, here's what I'll say. I, there's no reason. This is where I'd say like, hey Sean, can you punch up the Bengals to win to make the playoffs? Six to one. Is that what it was? Yeah. I, I'm I'm uh I'm not mad at anyone that wants to. If, if you're a Bengals fan, that's probably the best way to bet your team this year. They're not winning the Super Bowl. They're not winning the conference. <laughs> They're probably not going to win. You know what though? Oh, Twenty-two oh, to oh, one. Oh, Twenty-two oh, to oh, one is interesting. Yeah, I mean, really. Well, I, again, the seventh. They play- have reinforcements. Like all the arguments. The, the seventh playoff spot does. The tackles be- could be good. I, I think if they have an amazing season, you may as well take the division at twenty-two hundred versus yeah. win- the playoffs at plus six hundred. Like 
the plus 1600 disparity there between division and playoffs. Probably uh, it's not Sean. We almost need to do a contest for a hundred dollar bangles to win the division ticket. Okay. I I'm feel down. like there's something there. Biggest bangles fan that reviews the podcast sends it in. We'll place a hundred dollar bet for you uh, to win the uh, division at 22 to one Kramer. Let's do it. Let's lock some picks up. Oh my God. My lock. This is a tough division for me, Sean. Give me the Steelers mm, over. You're crazy. And my other lock. You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm doing two locks today or three, two, two. Well, cause you try and do three. It's just fucking, I'm not it, trying. This is, I don't know. Not every one of these. I'm right on the edge. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fade the Ravens under 11 and a half. That's my other lock. And then futures picks. Give me a uh, Steelers division plus three fifty. That feels good. I so this is this is tough for me. I could I could go Bengals under five and a half, but I'm going Ravens. I'm looking I'm looking the beast right in the eye. Yeah, Sean tried to. I would have gone three uh, three in the last division for sure, and then in the NFC West, and then maybe only done one here because I'm a half from every. I'm a half win from every single one of these, and doing things like taking the the under for the Ravens makes sense to me. So that's I'll definitely throw that one out there because I think just from a you're going to make me pick two. I think absolutely the best play is to play the regression angle. 11 and a half is such a big number. Uh, they, they regress down three wins. Uh, you, you win that it's not, it's not crazy. And then the other side, I can't, I can't do the Steelers, man. Like I, I just Steelers under, I don't want to take the Steelers under though. So I, no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to appeal to the, the city that really loves us. And that's Cleveland, Cleveland rocks. Even and though I, you had them going eight and eight, I have them going eight and eight. Okay, but why not? Let's go <laughs> over for the Cleveland Browns. Okay, so even though you have them going eight and eight, you're advising people to take the over eight and a half. I was very conservative. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Okay. I get, you're making me pick one, and I can't, I can't, I can't take the Bengals. I can't, I can't take over for the Bengals team. Okay. So that's it. I got to I got to create some other column where your win total prediction contradicts what your lock is. All right, All you right. know what? I got no, that no, in no, there. No, 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 no. You know what? You're, I I enjoy No, no. I enjoyed I it's more fun. Let's go. Cincy, fuck Cleveland. <laughs> I forgot. I hate Baker Mayfield. Oh. I forgot. I, lo- I love Skyline Let's Chili. Let's go over on Cincy. Let's go. Skyline Chili is delicious. Shout out to well, my uh, in-laws in the greater Cincinnati in, area. In fairness, though, like this division, this is—is is there a bigger crapshoot? Um. Yeah, I mean, probably the AFC South. I just feel like the, the NFC floor, South. the floor and ceiling for like for three of these teams is all over the board. Well, Ryan. That's why we figured this I'm out tired. on the preview podcast. Hey, check out all the uh, all the other oh. pods we've put out there as far as fantasy player props. It's all up there. It's all good stuff. Oh my god, we got some uh, We're over two hours talking about the AFC what oh North. My god. Oh, well, we had some great guests. Oh my god, <laughs> Scott Bowser, Big Play Dave. Make sure you check those guys out. Subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. You just listened to a two hour divisional preview podcast. Throw us. Throw us a little piece of bread. We're like pigeons, and our bread is those five star ratings and reviews. <laughs> and shout out to Hannah, of course, new friend of the program, represent, <laughs> representing the three percent of female yeah. listeners. Uh, shout out to you, Hannah. What's up, Hannah? We posted. Uh, she posted a reaction video of her listening to her review. It's pretty awesome. Check that out on Twitter at Gambling Podcast, or of course our Instagram. But again. Need those five star reviews, people. This is the fuel that keeps the content train alive. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. And for the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. You can follow me on Instagram at Kramer Centric. Kramer, let it ride.